What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Sheehan Show with me, Sean Sheehan, here on Sherdog.com. And today we are looking ahead to one on a prime video for Abasov versus Lee, which goes down uh, on the 18th of November over at the Singapore Indoor Arena. It's in, in this is the latest of, I suppose, a, a long line of recent World Championship cards. It feels like they're pumping out once a month every month which is absolutely fantastic you know and I've covered a lot of the recent ones uh, before and after the bell I suppose and um, you know they have been very interesting I just wanted to start today's show by maybe talking about that for for a few minutes here because I, I don't know has one championship ever had as much um, I suppose goodwill as it has right now, it feels like more people are talking about him, and maybe that's maybe that's me being biased because I'm here talking about him myself, and uh, I'm I'm listening to myself talking about him. But I, I do feel like online, and I feel people talking. You know, we've all heard about the, you know the 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 big numbers that one championship produce online, and you you know you can you can see a lot of that on on social media if you go looking at their posts and different things that they you know <laughs> you know they do um, the one on Prime Video thing. I, I wonder has that like I, I'm here in Ireland so we don't have it here on that we have it on the uh, it's on YouTube and on the website and things I wonder has that been the factor and I, I can't really think of anything else as a, as for, apart from me you know covering these wonderful <laughs> these wonderful cars but I, I wonder is that like I see you know Luke Thomas talking about it I see people kind of replying to him talking about it uh, you know our guy Greg uh, Grabaka Hitman talking about it saying so, he, uh, he talks about everything I know but you see like they're putting uh, the, the, the sentiment coming from those sort of people and more people online seems to be like and, and myself as well and I, I 100% have said this the one championship put on a great product they're putting on an interesting product they've talked multiple times here about doing different things putting on a bit of grappling putting on a bit of Muay Thai and obviously mixed martial arts as well in it and as someone who is maybe not the biggest uh, kickboxer or Muay Thai fan in the world not the biggest grappling fan in the world leader in terms of the, the grappling alone but I like watching a bit of grappling I think just the one grappling match thrown into the middle of it is just so fun like seeing Kadri at all the last day and seeing others as well um I just I've really enjoyed it you know and I, I think the mix between kickboxing and MMA is something that maybe they have to you know change around maybe or maybe you know maybe make a kickboxing only, only card with not, not kickboxing only but a kickboxing heavy card with a couple of MMA then an MMA heavy card with a couple of kickboxing I think it's better like sprinkle things in them but we obviously we've talked about that before but what they have now it seems like it's definitely kind of I don't know it's catching on the word but definitely people are, are shining a more positive light on it are seeing it in a more positive way and you know what it, <laughs> If I thought that was wrong, I'd come on here and say it. But I, I don't, because like watching the cars are actually, they're very, very fun. Not only are they fun and there's something different in it, which is massive. We've all, I've talked about that for years and years on different podcasts. MMA organizations, the combat sports organizations even, as one championship bar, they need to do something different. Like PFL, I don't like everything they do, but they do something different. I like that. You look at Cage Warriors, they have the up and comers. They have great commentary. They do something different. They're really good at watching it. I think like Bellator, the 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 walkouts, the the Irish cards, the Hawaii cards. They do something different. It makes you know it makes them different. When they have like a normal everyday card in Uncasville on a Friday, it's sometimes it's it's a bit samey, and that's I, I'm actually not criticizing Bellator, Bellator for that. It's just the reality of the situation. I think. Whereas the one championship card, it's actually like. It's it's hard for it to be samey because it's so different, and I I think as well you can have the difference, uh, you know the, the the differences, and you can have different parts of different sports coming into it. But if you don't have the quality, I think it always lets it down. That was a big thing I said at the start as well when it was World Series of Fighting came out. It's like they have some good fighters like Marlon Morris and you know Justin Gaethje was around at that time, wasn't he? And others, but I'm like. Yes. Still, they don't have some of the best fighters in the world, and now they're getting more and more, obviously. For one championship, it feels like 
it feels like that's improving all the time. We'll, we'll see on next month's card, Roberto Soldic is going to be there. We look at Angela Lee, and you can't help but think Angela Lee is like one of the top, you know, 15 fighters in the world, maybe, and uh, Xiong and Zhang as well, and, and others. You see, you know, one championship signing more and more people, and you see a lot of the their fighters now, like, say, we'll be talking about Christian Lee here, you're thinking, well, he could go to Belt, or he could go to the UFC, he could go to the PFL. And I'm not sure, you know, is he going to win a title or anything? No, maybe not, but... It it just feels like the um the 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 level of fighter is actually like really really good and it feels like one championship are signing a little bit like Bellator doing uh, world uh, uh, one championship some or sorry um PFL do sometimes now as well they're kind of getting them before the UFC and obviously probably paying them pretty good money and and you know getting them to their promotion first look what they what they and they obviously they have the greatest of all time in Demetrius Johnson they had Eddie Alvarez for a while who was you know still a, a top lightweight obviously when when he came maybe not anymore with with age and things like that but obviously Saldich now as well and I'm interested to see if there's more money coming in, if they can sign more people, but not only that, they have like some very good up and comers and a lot of very, very good kickboxers as well. So I just think it's a very positive time for one championship. And honestly, it's been, uh, it's been a joy covering them. Like the UFC, it's, it's harder and harder to cover the UFC all the time. Like I love going and watching a Bellator card or a cage race card or a one championship card. And it just feels like, you know, the, the, the chasing back is myself and my good friend, Dean O'Neill of a podcast offered to me and make all the chasing back. The chasing back seems like it's m- m- maybe not close to the UFC and definitely not close to UFC, probably further away than, from the UFC than it's ever been. But I don't know, has it ever been like as enjoyable or as varied right now? So I think we're living in a good time for MMA if you're sick of the UFC, if you only want to watch the big fights, if you're thinking like there's some very good people on the undercard, but like, are they really going to, you know, ever become stars, ever get anywhere in the, in the UFC? Would I be better off watching somewhere where people like that, even, you know, people who might not have the quality to get to the very, very top of the UFC are getting more of a shine, are getting pushed more, the personalities are coming out. I think there definitely is a spot for that as well in the world of mixed martial arts. And I think one championship are definitely, uh, are definitely part of that, along with the other organisations I mentioned as well. So, an interesting time uh, ahead here. Right, let's get into the card. Very interesting card. Um, at the top of it, we have uh, Abasov versus the aforementioned Christian Lee for uh, the... Uh, which what one called our welterweight championship, but at one eighty five as well. But just before we get into that, I'm, I'm obviously I'll break down the MMA fights here. I'm not the biggest expert in um, a kickbox in the world. I give you that breakdown afterwards, or that when I watched it. But Rod Tang is fighting here against L- Joseph Lasiri. Um, in I, I, I watched. Uh, uh, the series last uh, outing in, in one championship uh, it, it wasn't uh, too long ago and he, he looked uh, he looked very very good in that uh, won by Dr. Stoppage uh, in the third um, and Road Tang obviously you know he is I, I know him best I suppose and, and people are saying probably noob here from the Demetrius Johnson fight and then watching him uh, after that as well fight in uh, uh, in his own rules uh, let's put it that way and he's just an absolute animal of a fighter just throws with reckless ab- not, it's not reckless abandon but it it feels to an onlooker like me and I suppose uh, probably a lot of people watching to this as well like it's reckless abandon but it's just 100% power uh, and a, a mighty man I would call him he's absolutely brilliant so that should be uh, that should be a very very fun one Laziri more of maybe um not more of, but a very, uh, I would say, a technical fighter rather than the big power of someone like Rod Tang, who is obviously a really, really good technical fighter as well. But uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. Should be fun. Uh, Cosmo Alexandra fighting out of uh, out of Florida via Brazil. He's fighting uh, uh, Juan uh, Cervantes, who's fighting uh, in uh, Newcastle upon Tyne over in, uh, over in the UK. Um, you know, Cosmo. That's I suppose that's a name a lot of people uh, would uh, would be familiar with. You know. He's fought um, Sage Narcot uh, and knocked him out early. You know he's had uh, you know matches with with uh, Wayne Parr and Nikki Holskin and others as well. So a very very uh, 
you know, sought after kickboxer in terms of uh, watching, and uh, that should be a fun one as well. Jonathan Haggerty is all. I know all people in the UK are very, very high on him. He's fighting Vladimir uh, Kuzmin in a Muay Thai bout, um, and Liam Nolan against uh, Eddie Abasolo as well uh, should be fun. Danielle Kelly is a grappling match here. She's fighting or, or grappling against uh, Maria Mal, uh, Canova. Uh, Danielle Kelly, another one, like a, a seemingly a, a star coming up in the grappling realm, uh, which, uh, you know, one championship have done a great job recently of highlighting their grapplers and making it, you know, making it fun and making their the person that they want to be the star like a stand out on the card and giving them belts and all of this I just I've really enjoyed it I think it's been really really good and you know Daniel Kelly is probably the next one here that they, they want to highlight with that so we'll uh, we'll see how that goes from but it should be uh, it should be fun right let's get into the mixed martial arts fights uh, and run through them here uh, we'll, we'll start at the very very top Abasov uh, against uh, against Christian Lee Obviously, both these lads held belts in uh, in one championship and are very, very good fighters. Watching watching Abasov over the last couple of days and watching some of his fights for for someone uh, you know, I call myself an analyst here for a second. For an analyst watching his fights, you watch you know one, two, three of his fights, or you know sometimes I like to flick on a fight, see how a person fights at the first minute, and see how a person fights in like the last two or three minutes, and. I did that with a few of Abbasov's fights, and I was, okay, I got an idea. He very, very fights a similar way in this fight, this fight, this fight, this fight. And then I went to another fight, and he fought like a completely different way. So, it's hard to know what you're going to get from Abbasov, I think, because he does fight different ways against different sorts of opponents. And now, the biggest difference, I think, uh, in his game was was fighting against people, I suppose, who would be known uh, more as uh, as wrestlers or heavy heavy wrestlers. Uh, Rene de Ritter being the, uh, the standout one, obviously, in his last fight. But we, we saw him a little bit as well in the, um, in, I think it was the Kadistan fight where he was kind of standing back and waiting a little bit more. And if you... Okay, let's talk about the that game plan first, right? So if he fights that way, and against Christian Lee, we'll talk about that in a second, but I, I'm not sure if he will or, or he won't, but he loves to wait on the outside and play the longer game, right? And he will literally do almost nothing on the outside, when he plays that game. Now, when he plays the other game, it's very, very different. But that game, first of all, is like little touches to the outside of the leg. It's waiting for you to come in, not even throwing that many counters, just kind of waiting for you to make a sort of mistake to do what he wants to do. And what he wants to do, and this is kind of transitioning over to where you see him uh, in all parts of his game, I would describe him as a clinch and pound fighter. Now, what does that mean? He absolutely loves pushing people against the cage and hitting them, either taking them to the ground and beating them there or uh, fighting with them against the cage. He, uh, you know, very, very, um, very, very good Greco. I think he, he's won a few tournaments and things like that. Very, very good Greco. Very, very good controlling against the cage. Very, very good clinch. And the ability to land shots against the clinch is very, very good. Now, that is his M.O., whether he fights the um, the slower outside game or his other game. Now, let's talk about his other game. His other game is aggression. And he's a, he is aggressive to get you against the cage. Um, and we'll see this with a couple of different people on this card I'm going to talk about. And, you know, there's, there's another one championship card as well coming up. And I think it's sometimes we, we see teams in these, his card, and, and this is definitely one of them. Uh it's takedowns against the cage. I think where he's the best. Obviously, when you want to clinch, when your 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 mo is to clinch, when your mo is to land shots against the clinch, and when your mo is to get the fight to the ground, you're going to see a lot of takedowns against the clinch, or a lot of attempted takedowns against the clinch. He's not one for like chain wrestling a lot. He usually gets the takedown when he goes for it. He usually picks the time very well, which is an interesting thing and I wonder uh, and I say interesting because we don't see that that often in MMA now we do see it sometimes you know you clasp the hands behind the, the legs you pick someone up you take them down you know easy does it kind of job but when someone kind of doesn't get it it feels like they go for it again 
miss it again, go for it again, go. And then it, they either get the takedown or the fight ends up uh, getting out. It feels like you rarely see that with Abbasov. Feels like you rarely, rarely, rarely see it with him. He and, and I wonder. Uh, my, my point there is, I wonder, is that because of the shots he lands in the clinch, and he gets people thinking about those shots, and then it opens up the takedown. I think it probably is. You know, it probably is that those takedowns. Because that very good, just very very good, very heavy on top as well. When he gets the fight to the ground, um, the two things I would say about him: one positive, one I suppose negative. But I, I, the negative part first: I don't think he's the best passer in the world. Like I don't think he's the best in transitions. I don't think he's the best at moving from uh, full guard to half guard. Or I, I saw one stage he kind of. Uh, there was a transition or kind of someone slipped or something and he ended up in side control and I actually don't think he liked it that much there old school ground up pound is the positive thing I would say about him on the ground he gets you know the, the Tito Ortiz full guard position and lands loads of shots when he's in obviously someone else's full guard not him being a full guard uh, him having someone in there he's full guard when he's in someone else's full guard lands loads of shots absolutely loads of shots now you can get to the fight to the ground with a big double leg too um and i think a lot of that is because he's people are worried about the clinch as well so that part of his game i think runs everything else um as i said on the feet it's just aggression more than anything else um the biggest negative i would say about him is he doesn't get that tired when he's in his own realm but when he's striking i think he gets he gets very tired and you see him at the end of fights as i said go and watch the last two minutes of some of his fights the hands are down looks tired and he's just looking kind of to slip under and get a takedown to kind of save himself and save a bit of energy christian lee on the other hand then you know i remember I, i'm looking at my notes for his last fight coming into it and i i kind of had written down wrestle boxer and uh, you could say that, and especially in this maybe matchup in Avasov, when you look at Avasov, obviously has very good offensive wrestling, but his defensive wrestling, I think he has an issue with it. And I didn't maybe mention that there, but we much, but we see during the other Raider fight, the whole reason he fights maybe the slower outside game at times is because of the fear of that wrestling. Um, so maybe this is the, the fight that Christian E goes back to that. Having said that, his last fight, he looked phenomenal. I watched it back again last night after seeing it uh, a few weeks ago. Obviously, it wasn't too long ago since uh, since that fight happened, although in, in MMA terms, it, it might be a few months ago now. At this stage. <laughs> no, you know, you never know the way uh, MMA moves. But, um, however, it, it was a very, very, very good striking um display by him very 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 good uh the left hook just looked like it was always there and always landing the check left hand the check left hook really really good the one thing i would say in that fight as well which made him stand out was the footwork defensively just so good just so good that's from a defensive point of view from an offensive point of view the varied attacks the kicks just throwing punches from different places just helped him so much i thought it was really really good and then we could talk about he can wrestle afterwards obviously you know he's uh, his sister angela lee is uh you know one of those go forward take you down start the fighters when she can be and i think he can be too um but I call him a wrestle boxer. If you put the box in, he displayed against the Hulk in the last fight with a bit of wrestling. God almighty, that's a tough, tough uh, out for anyone there. And I talked about, you know, maybe guys like him being able to go over to uh, to the UFC or to Bellator. I think he'd have a great time over there, if I'm being honest, uh, and have lots of fun fights. Now, this is a tough matchup. Look, <clears throat> if this turns into a striking matchup, Christian Lee will win, I think. Uh, I, I really think that. If it doesn't, I think it could go either way. Because I'm not sure. Like, if it turns into a big clinching matchup, both are strong there. I would give Abasov the advantage, especially if he can uh, engage the clinch uh, from the, say, the front foot point of view and, not, and keep his back off the cage. Um, I think he'll have the advantage. But if it turns into that wrestling match, or, or, or you know, who will turn into that wrestling match, I suppose, if it does turn into that? Like, can Abasov take Lee down against the cage? Can he push him against the cage first? Can he take him down? Can, can Christian Lee get, you know, take on there as well? Now, Christian Lee is the type of guy as well who does push you against the cage. I saw one lovely takedown he got where he attacked someone's hip and absolutely just pulled him out from the cage and took him down. Beautiful stuff. Um, 
be very interesting. It'd be very, very interesting. I think Christian Lee can afford to turn this into a striking match where, you, you know, you, you look at it and you say two wrestlers and they go in there striking. Now, now, not necessarily Christian Lee. I wouldn't call him a just a wrestler or Abasov either, but you get my point. Two guys who can be strong in that area. Will they do that? I don't know. I, I, I don't think it'll be turned into a kickboxing match just because I don't think Abasov, after Lee's last performance, will want to turn it into that. I think he'll want to turn it into a wrestling match. That means he's going to have to clinch. That means Christian Lee is going to have to stay away from the clinch. And I think that defensive footwork last time is going to be really needed here. Who's going to win this fight after saying all of that? I think, look, I think Lee is a better striker, as I said. Um, I think he's good enough footwork to stay out of that clinch. And I feel like if he can do that for two rounds, get Abasov running around after him, make him tired, I think shots could open up for him. Also, if Lee, if Christian Lee can do that, I think he'll open up the takedown. Abasov, not the best defensive wrestler in the world, as we saw in the Rainy the Ritter fight, immediately taken down in that fight. I don't think Lee should necessarily do that. Maybe he will. But tire him out first, then go for the takedown, take him down. That'll be the winner of the fight for Christian Lee, I think. And I think he will win it that way. So I'm going for Christian Lee. My big Christian Lee for that one. Um, let's run through the rest of the fights. Bibiano Fernandez against Stephen Lawman. What a fight this is. Um, watch a bit of Stephen Lawman. Like, Stephen Lawman is one of those fights, or one of those fighters where I've watched him look multiple times throughout my years watching him. But he's one of those ones you see on Shardog in someone's record and you think, oh, he fought Stephen Lawman. That was a tough fight. You know, he's won it all because he's fought everyone. He's fought for years and years and years around the place. Let me see how many fights he has. I bet you he doesn't have as many fights as uh, uh, <laughs> as, as, I'm, uh, as I'm thinking about. It's 18 fights, I think, so which which is not as, as much as I uh, I would think, I suppose. But, like, you, some of the names he has fought for, for the last few years, you know, my own uh, countryman here, Franz Malamba, he's fought him uh, a couple of times. And, you know, he's been around since, what, 2012 now. So he's fought for a very, very long time and fought, you know, in uh, in one championship uh, as well uh, for for a good while. You know, he's obviously supposed to fight John Lineker. Bibiano Fernandez uh, ended up having that Lineker fight and obviously losing at the start of the year. Uh, so now they're, they're kind of fighting each other, I suppose. Um, he... Uh, uh, Bibiano and Fernandez fought Kevin Bellion uh, a couple of times. Who obviously, you know, uh, who uh, who trains a lot with uh, with uh, uh, with, with uh, Kevin. Uh, what? Where am I going? I'm after losing my blazer. Yeah, with with Stephen Norman. Sorry, uh, fighting out of uh, like a Central Gym, um, and they're two very similar fighters. Very very similar fighters. So the fact that uh, you know Bibiano Fernandez has those two wins, I suppose you know obviously one by a takedown and a ground bound the other by rear naked choke will tell you kind of all you need to know I suppose coming in here Bibiana, Bibiana Fernandez is one of those fighters maybe sometimes maybe I haven't analysed massively closely a, a lot of times he's one of these guys I've liked for years and always talked about him coming into the UFC but like I suppose he's a lot more takedown and, and BJJ orientated than uh, than you would normally see from a guy who has as much maybe hype as him. And when I say hype, it's probably like hardcore hype from oh, Bibiana Fernandez is fighting. He's never fought in UFC. He hasn't been you know at the, at the big show, uh, I suppose, and but has a great reputation. You, you, you. That's usually like someone who's like, you know, maybe an Adesanya before he came in, or a Wonderboy, or someone like that, um, who are like exciting strikers, or well, ex exciting in question quotation marks. Um, but he is that very strong wrestler, very strong takedown, loves the half guard. Uh, do you know one thing I see? He's very, he's more muscular these days, and maybe that's because he's, you know, gone up uh, in in weight to one championship. I don't know how that necessarily works but anyway he does look more muscular and I don't think it helps him even though he has kind of a strong man's game um he looks a bit like Odin to me um does as little as possible standing unless someone throws at him in close quarters and then he puts that big right hand down through the middle which he uses to set up takedowns very very good on the ground absolutely excellent on the ground Lohman on the other hand you know he's a striker he is a striker he throws hooks loves the hooks he's a sopa and he has this one thing as well that I noticed with him he reminds me a little bit of like post Alvarez McGregor which is maybe not a, the biggest compliment in the world but just the, the way he um, 
the way he strikes, like that rounded guard. We see uh, Kalen Nochran over in Cage Warriors kind of fighting that way now, where he's kind of um, a middling to low stance, a, a, like a literally a rounded guard with his hands. And then you never know which hand he's actually kind of leading with. He's and that may, means he's like not the longest fighter in the world. That means he's kind of open for takedowns uh, as well. But he's dangerous when he throws those big shots at you. Um, will stand static in the middle and Trump Power be good enough against Bibiano Fernandez? Oh, I don't think so. I, I, I but we haven't said that. I don't know where Bibiano is in in his career at the moment. Like is. Uh, like is Bibiano the the guy anymore? Like is he uh, as good as he uh, uh, as good as he once was? I suppose we we will uh, we will see. At the moment, I'm picking Bibiano to win that, and uh, I I will I will go with that as my pick. Um, the next fight, and this is why I was getting addled earlier. It is Kevin Bellin. Yeah, they're both on they're both on this. So you know they have the the red shirt, which I think is a great idea. Like. Uh, did you, so everyone from the gym wears red shorts if I'm not mistaken I actually think that's great I'd lo- I love I, if I owned the gym if I won the lotto sometime and I owned the gym I'd never ever wear the, the green and white shorts of uh, <laughs> of Limerick it'd be absolutely brilliant but uh, I think that's very uh, very interesting anyway Kevin Bellignan against uh, Kim Jae Wung it feels like Kim is one of these fighters that I have analysed maybe three or four times <laughs> at this stage in, in the few months I've been doing these fights because uh, it, you know he fights a, fights a good bit and he um He's a very interesting fighter. Big power, solid jab, solid footwork, great head movement, power right hand. I uh, slept Martin Wayne. Um, not the best performance last time, I suppose. Uh, but this isn't a fight I don't think where either lad will be looking for. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't think either lad will be looking for too much of a um, a wrestling game or anything like that. This is going to be a strike. We might as well make this a Muay Thai fight, lads, I think. But just last thing on Kim before I move on and talk about Bellion for a second. He is that guy, I don't know if you remember watching la- uh, previous previews, where he kind of likes to stand in the middle, gives you the pretense that he's doing nothing, work you in and then land big shots. You know, he'll have a, <laughs> he'll have a joyous partner here in Kevin Bellignan if he wants that, because that's what he's going to do. Bellignan is all about fast movements, all about power, hard leg kicks, that spinning kick, which himself and Lowman both throw very, very good. Um, Bellignan's, you know, being lighter, uh, is he, well, the same way, but he seems lighter. <laughs> it seems a bit faster. <clears throat> Having said this is going to be a kickboxing match, Bellignan does have big takedowns and he does have power takedowns. And when he does it, he does it at 100% like he does everything else as well. Um, the one issue he does have, which I actually don't think will pop up here, he kind of loses the head a little bit when he's pushed back. Now, maybe Kim will look at his fight, see that, and change the way he fights. I've watched a pile of Kim fights now and I've never seen him fight a different way than the way he normally fights. So, I, I think he's good takedown defense as well, so maybe the Bellignan big takedowns won't work and it will turn into that kickboxing match I was talking about and I think it will. But like, it's going to be Bellignan coming forward and Kim trying to counter. I really do think that. I really think that's how this fight is going to look and how this fight is going to go. And by God, that's going to be, a, that's going to be an interesting one. A very, very interesting one. Right, the last fight on the card, um, Izzy uh, Fikiti, uh, Fiti Kefu, I, I, I nailed that one, uh, against Ruslam Emilbek Ulu. We saw him fight on one of the last two or three cards, um, came in kind of on, on late notice to uh, to fight that. And I was very impressed with him. He tricked his opponent to get him to the, clo- to the floor. Very good kind of low clinch. Um, he got thrown with kind of a head and arm truck in that fight, and he ended up getting the back. Very, very strong. Big throws. Uh, I described in that fight, he big brothered Wilhelm in that fight. To, you know, very, very good, as I said, taking the back. Very good in the clinch. Lots of knees, and then, you know, he's the submissions as well. Um, uh, Fiti Kefu, he was supposed to fight in the UFC. He even made weight, I think. I was looking him up. Uh, never ended up fighting in the UFC, but I watched a couple of these fights over in, uh, uh, I think they were in Australia. But, uh, you know, he 
I would describe him as having a, uh, he looks like a rugby player. Let, let's be honest there. He, he looks like he's a rugby player build. He's strong. He wrestles very, very hard. Um, he just, look, he comes forward with strikes and he looks for his wrestling. Looks for that da- Dagestani handcuff an awful lot as well. Uh, smaller and squat for that division. Um, as I said, rugby player build, very, very strong when he gets the fight to the ground. This to me is... Strength versus strength. Who's going to be the stronger grappler? Who's going to be able to hold the other guy down? Who's going to be able to win the fight there? As I said, look, it's two wrestlers and two very, very strong guys. Maybe it'll turn into a kickboxing match. I don't think so. I think both of these guys are going to back their ability to take the fight to the ground. And I think one of them will win it. And honestly, I don't know. I think... I was very impressed with Ulu. I think Fidikefu has probably fought at a higher level. Maybe probably think of him as higher, but I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I I think this start of fight, I, I'm going to pick Ulu, I think. I'm going to pick, I think Fidikefu will push the fight forward. He fights out of Robert Whitaker's gym as well, so he's a very good training partners and stuff, but um, I feel like he'll try to push Ulu against the cage and end up on the bottom himself because Ulu's throws, the way he just transitions very, very well. Uh, and I think he'd probably win the fight from there. But I don't know. Honestly, if I could pick a draw here, I'd pick it. Uh, I think this is going to be an interesting fight. But um, yeah, overall, uh, an interesting card. Four very interesting MMA fights. Some kickboxing, Muay Thai, uh, and Daniel Kelly as well with a bit of grappling. Um, I will leave it there. Enjoy the fights. Let me know what you think. Let me know your picks for MMA fights. Let me know your picks for the four MMA fights in the comment section down below. And uh, you'll get a big thumbs up from me if you get them all right. So uh, do that. I will leave it there. My name is Sean Sheehan for Shardog.com. And I'll see you all next time.